Thank you so much. All right. So I'm coming from Moffitt Cancer Center, Monica Avila, and I'm here and very excited to talk to you guys about the newest advances in cellular therapy. Um, and there's some very exciting stuff coming down the pike. So these are my disclosures. All right. So, so what is it? So what is CAR-T? So CAR-T falls under the umbrella of something called adoptive cell therapy. And adoptive cell therapy really represents a new category of therapeutic options for solid tumors where we actually use or we engineer new immune system T cells to elicit a tumor response. So the first branch in this tree are tumor infiltrating lymphocytes or TIL, um, which actually uses the patient's own immune system cells already in the tumor microenvironment. They amplify them in the lab and then they give them back to the patient. There are two other new categories that have come out and these two categories are all created in a lab. The T cell receptor category or TCRs use naturally occurring receptors to recognize antigens that are on something called immune complexes. And really kind of the most recent finding were CAR Ts, which by contrast actually create synthetic receptors um, to recognize antigens that are already directly on the surface of cancer cells. So if it's such a wonderful application, where's the delay, right? Uh, the success of replicating CAR T cells in solid tumors has actually proven more difficult than in liquid ones. And this is largely due to three very distinct differences in solid tumors, including a large variation of tumor types of cells and antigens on the surface of those cells, the difficulty of actually entering and trafficking cells into a solid tumor mass, and the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment that everything sits in. But more recently, it's been proposed that if in sites where the solid tumor actually is confined, that if we provide actual administration of CAR Ts into that area, it may be more effective than systemic or IV administration. And this will be relevant as we begin to talk about some of the internal trials we have at Moffitt. So what are we actually targeting in ovarian cancers? Well, to date, there's been many potential antigens studied in the lab and in the clinical setting, as you can tell by the pyramid. Amongst these, some of you guys are familiar with are folate receptor alpha, mesothelin, and something called follicle stimulating hormone, for which we actively have some trials open. And we have more coming down the pipeline. So let's look at some of the phase one studies for folate receptor and mesothelin that actually laid the groundwork to be able to initiate the follicle stimulating hormone trial that we have open today. So in 2006, Dr. Patrick Hu from Moffitt ran a phase one study that looked at a folate receptor alpha target. He had two cohorts uh, in this study. The first were treated with a bulk of T cells that had this anti-folate receptor receptor, um, and they combined it with something called IL-2, and then they looked at another cohort with the same types of T cells, um, but also added on something called polymorphonuclear cells to boost that immune response. Sadly, he saw no responses, but it proved the concept that the T cell administration was actually safe, um, even if it didn't seem that the cells stuck around for very long. And then came along another phase one study out of Pennsylvania that looked at mouse-derived CAR-T targeting mesothelin. Once again, we observed the same thing, very limited persistence and very low efficacy. So to improve this, the group actually came out with a new CAR-T called M5, and this is a fully human anti-mesothelin CAR-T. They looked at 14 patients on three different dose levels. Um, and this time around, they were able to find uh, response cells around up to six and 12 months later. They even found that two of the patients had stable disease at three and nine months. Um, but unfortunately, about a quarter of the patients saw some high grade cytokine release syndrome, which is one of those post infusion inflammatory reactions that we know happen with CAR T. In China, we saw a second generation mesothelin CAR T created. And it was created in a way that tried to minimize the, what we call the off target or the non-tumor effects that can happen. Three patients were actually treated with a single dose and two of those patients actually saw stable disease up to 5.8 months. 
So after looking at a variety of all the prior trials and potential antigens, including the ones previously studied, FSH or follicle stimulating hormone actually stood out as the one antigen specifically expressed only on the tissues of the ovaries and the testes in humans. So in 2017, Conejo Garcia's lab while at Moffitt actually published on the creation of a brand new CAR-T against FSH, and he coined it the first chimeric endocrine receptor, or CUR. In the PDX mouse models, he treated with FSH CUR. We saw significant tumor regression, and then we also saw significantly improved survival in the FSH CAR-treated mice compared to the controls. So all of this preclinical data led to the opening of the first phase one trial being led by Dr. Robert Wenham at our institution, evaluating the safety and efficacy of follicle stimulating hormone as a target. It's open to patients with recurrent high-grade serous ovarian cancers with a minimum of two prior lines of chemo, at least one which has to be a platinum, and patients have to be considered either platinum sensitive or resistant or refractory um, with a performance status of two or lower. So in this trial, we're looking at a couple of different things. We're evaluating the use of intraperitoneal versus intravenous administration of the CAR-T, which the prior literature tells us is comparable to safety and effectiveness of IV. Uh, we're also looking at the role that lymphodepletion may or may not play in the T-cell expansion of solid tumors, where we actually pre-treat with chemo to dampen the response of non-CAR T-cells after the infusion, we're looking at the dosing of FSH T cells that's needed and the persistence of these T cells over time, as well as the role that the suppressive microenvironment plays on the T cells, both growing and sticking around in the tumor. So where are we now? Well, keeping in mind that this is an active trial in progress and that the data we have is still under review, we're currently in the evaluation phase after dose level three. All patients treated thus far have been successfully treated with intraperitoneal catheter administration of the CAR T. And this is a picture of Dr. Robert Wenham, Dr. Bueno, our resident, and myself, demonstrating the catheter that's used for the placement before the CAR T infusion. So now that cohort three is closed, well, who have we treated? Well, we've treated nine patients to date six of which are currently living, we have seen absolutely no dose limiting toxicity or DLTs, which is extremely exciting, encountered in the first three cohorts. Some of the adverse events that we have seen are constipation, urinary obstruction from the disease itself, some vaginal bleeding, a venous blood clot, and one port site infection. But most importantly, what we haven't seen are actually any significant evidence of something called cytokine release syndrome or immune effector associated cellular neurotoxicity syndrome or ICANS in patients receiving the intraperitoneal administration of the CAR-T. It's really relevant because these are the two syndromes that actually represent the two most common immune flare hurdles that we encounter when we give IV infusion of CAR-Ts in liquid tumors. All right, so in May of 2023, we treated patient number four, some of whom may know this patient as Marisol Gallagher. With her permission today, I'm gonna to recount her story through this process. She underwent the standard protocol, which included cellular apheresis or the cell harvesting from her blood and the CAR-T creation in the lab. This was followed by peritoneal catheter placement and eventually inspection and infusion of the cells that we knew were ready. After this, she was monitored closely for the development of any symptoms, including the cytokine release syndrome and the ICANS that we previously discussed. So how did she respond? Well, luckily in Marisol, not only did we see no significant adverse symptoms, but we actually saw this incredible durability of clinical response, keeping in mind that she has platinum resistant ovarian cancer. So post-infusion, we actually saw an immediate radiographic 
or imaging increase in the size of her measurable disease. We also noted that same increase in her CA125 tumor marker. However, over time, I noticed that she continued to report that she was in fact clinically really well. Um, and over a significant post-infusion period, we eventually saw shrinkage of disease and a downtrend in her CA125. So a delayed infusion biopsy was obtained and what we saw was actually necrosis or dying off of the tumor, inflammation and some T cell infiltration still lingering. So this led to a treatment-free interval of over 18 months with an ongoing measurable disease. So we started asking ourselves, well, what's next? So Marisol has been this incredible pioneer in this ray of light. And based on her clinical response, we actually created a single patient clinical trial, which was approved by the FDA in 2024 for the infusion of a single dose, same as the first dose level with a new cell harvest in the same fashion as we had done with infusion number one. And this picture was actually taken the date of her second infusion. Subsequent to this, and thanks to her bravery, the original trial was amended to allow all patients a chance at a second dose. So as we enter cohort number four, we now go on to the addition of lymphodepletion prior to the infusion, and we'll see how this plays out using lymphodepletion to allow for T cell expansion. And we also have an IRB approved option for a second harvest and a second dose if a patient is noted to have a durable response and the patient tolerated the first infusion well. We're hopeful to see what lies ahead in the cohorts we have treated and the cohorts to come. So we have two current active cellular therapy trials for ovarian cancer patients, um, including Dr. Wenham's FSH trial, which we talked a lot about. And we also have a secondary anti-mesothelin trial that includes ovarian cancers, as well as other solid tumors that I'm spearheading. So if you're interested or you know someone that might be interested, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you guys so much for your attention and for your time today.